welcome back to Great Taz's Leap Dangerous Beginner's Guide from a Beginner. Yes, that would be me. I have not a whole ton of hours into the game, but I have put quite a few in, and some days I put quite a few in in a day. So, here we are on episode 3, and welcome back. Um, in this episode, we're going to go over the uh, panels, the nav, communication, syst, your 1, 2, 3, and 4 by the keyboard. And let's get on it. As you can see um, here on the screen, we have, you know, when we load in after we've been in the game once, this is the ship that we are currently in. This tells us our name, our credits, where we're docked, where we're at, and if we're docked. And then you have your basic notifications. And right down here you have some informational screens of telling you what's going on. Alright. Y'all can check that out on your free time. And let's go ahead and get on with this. Open play it is. Alright. Here we go ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going to load in. Trade risks. Uh, that is a very good tip. Always keep an eye on your radar when you're in uh, light speed just in case there are enemies coming by and uh, we'll go over there'll be a guide at some point in time that I'll record to give you a little information on how to um, get out of interdictions um, all right here we are now we still have our mission which is going to be in our, our one panel or our nav panel now the nav panel has this is when you look at it first off your filters are right here okay and you can go to your galaxy map and your system map uh, inside the nav panel first this is everything in the system all right and systems outside all right these are other systems right here uh, if you notice also the indicator that I mentioned in episode 2 about um, starter zones is also right here as you can see um, right here for and uh, uh, right here in front of Wolfens, Wolfensing, um, Matta, these four down here, and Halaatia does not have that. It has the normal galaxy, uh, the system look like you see on your system map. From here, you can go to your galaxy map, which we went over a little bit in uh, episode two, and as you can see here, here are all of our systems that we can uh, that are our starter zone, and here's the system with our starter zone and our mission. All right. Now, while on the galaxy map, I'm going to go over the galaxy map a little bit. Now, you have some basic controls, which you can see down here on the bottom. All right. Uh, and these are different things like pitch up. You, you pitch down. Uh, you got a y'all left, y'all right. Uh, then you got uh, forward and then backwards. You got your left, your right. Um, you got your up and you got your down. And then you got your zoom in. And zoom out all right you can't see the zoom out on the screen zoom out is actually the X key all right so just so you have an idea now this is under your uh, basic information panel this tells you about each system when you click on it uh, gives you for a little information over the system that's the same thing you'll see kind of in here um, it tells you the color of star uh, tell you oh there's two stars in here there's a K star um, which uh, K5 and there's an L4. Uh, there's 18 region. I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe there's 18 uh, planets or stuff. Uh, it's owned by the pilots. It's aligned with the pilots' federation. The population is 6K. It's a corporate. There's no state, industrial. Um, not sure what glipsy means. Uh, and uh, not sure what hip means either. So let's see, I'm still learning too. All right. This is your basically your search. I call it your search panel because that's what you do. Um, you can select different locations and it'll tell you well how long it'll take you to get there. Um, you can set these different things. Your economical will give you the shortest jump, not really the shortest jumps, but it'll give you a bunch of smaller jumps. Um, the fastest route will give you bigger jumps so you won't go through as many systems and have to jump as many times to get to your location so this is this is a good thing to change once you get into this uh, before you just start flying around now cone boost is when you run into neutron stars uh, you have to come back in here and replot you have to click this and then replot your system when you do a um, 
fuel scoop on a neutron star, which again, we'll go over fuel scooping in a future episode. Your FSD boost, it's when you have materials that you prospect. Uh, we can go, we'll go over that again in another point in time. And this is, you can set to the level. And this is the tonnage uh, that you have. And this shows you your jump range um, with different sets of tonnage. And it's set up by your ship. So with uh, four tons, our jump range is 7.21 light years. All right. And we're just with the basic ship. All right. This is your bookmarks. We don't have any right now. Uh, we'll be getting those in the future. And as I mentioned in the first one, you create them by clicking on the, uh, the, t the tab. It looks the same with the plus, And then you can edit them later. This is your map. You can have a realistic view. It shows you the stars. You can do just do the map view, which has circles. Now these here, you can change what this is. The map configuration shows. This shows you all your 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 stars. This is your map configuration. Um, you can change this by just clicking here and changing on different things. We're going to keep it with star class. Now, these are all the star types that are in the game, and this last one applies it to your route. You can unclick this, but no. Um, show by shows is by population, and you can you get a, um, a scroller here that you can change, but I never really changed it. Uh, you got your latest trend based on 24 hours uh, data purchased in the last 24 hours. I suggest not purchasing data. Um, just because it, it's a waste uh, of credits. It's only 100 credits, but I mean, you can um, if you're doing a lot of trade missions to see what's right around you, but that's all right. Um, and this shows you uh, show trade routes of commanders, uh, commercial, and, and all of them. And then this is what you can show. Like here, it's commercial items, none. All right. Machinery, weapons. As you can see here, here's a blue line that just appeared if you take that one away it would be weaponry all right metals you can see here this line just appeared up under here so there's metals going to looks like this system here where we're at all right we turn around yep metals going into the system all right minerals we've got no minerals chemicals all right we got chemicals looks like they're coming into the system all right Weapons, again, uh, I think that the way the light line is going, I believe that means it's going um, in. Consumer tech, and see, and it's it's all based off what we know, and we only know the trade data here, so that's what it is. All right, power play is a whole nother subject, and you get a crazy thing look like this, and uh, I will go over power play in a future episode. All right, back to realistic. And these are all the icons that are on your screen, as you can see here. Uh, the starter zones, we can take those away, or we can put them back. Um, damage starports, as you can see here. Let me see if I can find any. Uh, as you can see here in the background, here is HR uh, 826, and that has a damaged starport. And then you can click this, and this shows you repairing starports. These are all starports that have been attacked by Thargoids, and uh, the damage need help. They all need help. So these are future things that we can uh, that I will be going over um, in future episodes. So we don't need to worry about that right now. Basically, all we need, and we don't need friends unless we have we're playing with friends. We don't need wing markers unless we're playing with people in a wing. Uh, mission markers, of course, that is right here at Matit. Uh, community goals, um, that currently is, community goals was taken away um, and changed with Interstellar Initiative. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with this, uh, if it's going to be renamed Interstellar Initiatives or what. Uh, I haven't seen anything on that. Engineers, uh, that's something I'll get into in the future. Ship markers, um, that's if you have multiple ships and it shows you where they are docked. And you can take off things like star names, nebula names. As you can see back there, the nebula Bernard's loop disappeared. All right. Region names. This is the Plata's nebula. Oh, why is that? That disappears for some reason. Even though it's a nebula name. I'm not sure. Constellation names. Uh, galactic sectors. I don't, I'm not far back. And show galactic names. Uh, like there's the inner Orion sphere. As we click it, it disappears. So there's a bunch of information you can find on here. All right. So we're going to go ahead and back on out of this. And then we're going to go over the system map here. 
real quick. System map, as I went over a little bit in episode two, it uh, gives you an overview of the system. This is the system. This is the dock we're at. This is another um, space station. This is a satellite space station. And this is what they call a Coriolis. There are ones that look like wheels. Uh, there's none here. This is a plan. These are your planets. Um, all right. And as you can see, some people have already mapped these planets. Uh, as you can see, their names are right here. First mapped. All right. And this is this is the. Uh, it looks like these two were in a wing when they dropped in. So, you know, it's our, this game has been out for many years, so many of these systems might be already explored. Uh, so you're not going to get a lot of first-time experience or first names on there. So under the galaxy map, we have the regular map, which we were looking at here. Uh, and you click on a system, click on a planet, it gives you... Not really anything. This gives you the overall view of the system. The orbitry, as we talked about in the last one, this is it. Uh, it just shows you how things orbit. If you look at this as your X, Y, and Z plane, and right there you can see most of the planets in this system orbit on a flat plane with the uh, X, Y axis. And then you have one that goes somewhat up on the Z axis, which is planet four. Now, this is interesting stuff because I've always said uh, I thought it'd be interesting because uh, the soul system is basically a ring around a ring around a ring around a ring. Um, and the only really difference in everything is all the way out to Neptune and Pluto, where they sometimes cross and Pluto becomes closer than Neptune for a while, and then Neptune is further away. Um, it, it's not a real big thing, and it only happens ever so little. So that's... It, just that now this is your information panel uh, your this is your overall system information panel and now this is your object information panel and this is where you get your information about your planets all right this tells you what the planet is now we've not scanned it so we won't know if there's any sites on it like this one will tell us what we might be able to get when we're surface prospecting surface processing is something we will go over in a future update future episode but it tells you uh, like your rock. This is a rocky. This is an icy ring. Uh, that's a rocky ring. And this one doesn't have rings. And then it tells you a little information about the uh, the trade data for um, space stations and, and planet data um, for other systems. So like this one has it's iron magma. It has no atmosphere. It's 80% rock. It's a uh, 20% metal. So you'll find rocky metal items when you do a prospecting, and that's what you got down here. All right. Again, this is your bookmark panel. You can bookmark things. Uh, and, and this is your points of interest panel. And uh, this is gets all, all the stuff that's in here, like Atkins Hub, which is right down here on this planet. You can tell by this blue ring, blue partial ring, and the three little uh, lines on it. That indicates a surface... Uh, landing spot uh, you need horizons to do that here is the the other uh, Demori 2a that would be this planet or, or moon three a B and C and that would be these three moons and of course Atkins hub and then your two ports or space stations which is Mawson's dock which we're already at and Demory prospect all right that's a little bit about your um, gal uh, system map all right let's go ahead and back on out all right, the next tab in the navigation panel is going to be your transaction panel, and there's different points on this. All right, first you have this, which is all your transaction, then your missions. You have passengers. If you have passengers uh, set up, this is your um, outstanding claims. Uh, if you have somewhere to get cr um, turn in stuff for credits, this is your fines, fines that you have uh, accrued, and you accrue fines for different things like shooting the good guys, or sitting, hovering over a landing dock that's not yours. Um, you have to pay these. And then these are bounties uh, if you have a bounty on you. Um, so we don't have any of that and we're not worried. And here is our mission. It's good for another 8 hours and 45 minutes. We will be completing that most likely in episode 4. Um, I want to go over some of the basics uh, with 2, 3, and... Uh, Episode 2 and 3. And there's going to be probably a 1. If you've already didn't watch it. 1.5. Uh, I'm recording these a little bit out of order. Because I, I had to take some time away from the game. Uh, and I want to get through the mission. 
Um, so there's going to be a 1.5, which I'm going to go over some of the training missions. It would have been uploaded first before this. All right. And uh, last in here is your contacts. These are all the things that you have that are in your contact version. You can click these and it's going to tell you in your left, it's actually your left um, little information panel, uh, what you need. Um, you're they're here. We're scanning this guy. He's harmless. Uh, tells you his shields. Um, he's clean. Has no record. He has no faction. Um, we got uh, Killer Frog 007. Here's another one. All right. Python. Now most of the ones like this, Orca, which is a uh, passenger ship. Scanning required. It's not in our front view. To scan, you must be in the front view. All right, let's go to Gretzky here. All right, these are all his modules. All right, as you can see here, it's a kill warrant scanner, heat seek launcher, burst laser, plasma accelerator, a drive a drive a hat, cargo hatch, heat sink, point defense, power plant. Now, this is um, built as a, is a the Vulture is a combat ship, so I'm gonna figure that this is an NPC. Um, it could not be. It might be a player. Now, Killer Frog, however, is a PC. And as you can see here, this is everything he has in his ship. All right. All right. Back onto the target. And this is if he has any cargo. But you need a manifest scanner to go ahead and look at that. All right. That's everything under the nav panel. Now, we went over to the communication panel, which is right here, um, a little bit earlier. Uh, in episode two and this is your basic your chat menu uh this is your main and this is your system all right all right and now you go over here this is your your um if uh, all the mail that you received your inbox and this is uh what we got earlier these are uh your social this has got your crew um looks like the mark three is actually a player because generally i don't remember npcs showing up here so he is a player in the Mark III, uh, and Commander Killer Frog. Well, no, Com Cobra Mark III would be an NPC, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, and this is your pending friends requests. Um, you can join other ships. These are your history of contacts um, that you've come across. And as you can see, these are P player characters because they've changed the way they look, um, which you can do at any point in time. This is your squadron. We don't have a squadron feed. And this is your uh, your settings tab. All right. And now number three, the ship information panel. This has all your ship information. All right. This goes over your helm, which is basically, you know, if you have more than one player and your uh, um, ship, it has multi-role capabilities, you will see all the information under the all. Your helm, you're only going to see the person who is flying the ship. That's going to be his information. Your fighters, if you have a fighter bay lock uh, in your ship, you're going to see that there. Your SRV, again, if you pick the uh, Horizon package um, for the starter, you would see an SRV in this. We do not have it because we picked the basic. Um, and which, which one I suggest everyone pick, especially if you have very little clue what you're doing. You can get better stuff, a better ship to go pros surface prospecting later. This is your crew. If you have any crew available, which we don't, you have to hire those. And this is your help menu. And this gives you a little information about it. Multi-crew tells you all the ships. Here, that uh, multi-crew capable ship supporters includes what you do. Um, you get better rewards, greater teamwork, instant access, additional PIP to your power distributors, which we'll go over that in a moment. All right. Um, and that's all the current ship. It tells you that at the bottom of your current ship doesn't. A lot of now this is your helmet it tells you who gets your helm calls um helm controls the ship of course usually the commander who owns the ship and um and tells you what you gain you can regain control of fixed and gibbled weapons if the gunner is in your crew uh, now a gunner a gunner on the crew controls has a control of all turrets missiles torpedoes on the ship so you don't have to worry about firing those they fire them and you fire everything else so in a long run, it helps you um, actually be able to do a lot better combat with two people. But your experience and rewards are split between all players on the ship. All right. And then you got a fighter. Fighter operates short-range fighters from the hangar base. Uh, you must have a fighter bay equipped. This ship does not have a fighter bay equipped, and it does not support a fighter bay. 
So, all right. That is your three panel or uh, ship panel, I like to call it. We're going to back up out of that. And on to the information panel. Now, the information panel, which is your right panel or four panel by the keyboard, has a lot of information in it. Like I said in episode two, uh, underneath my name, Commander Noob Taz, there is all those, the um, uh, Pilot Federation ranks there. Um, and once you get one of those and then land outside of the starting zones, um, dock outside of the starting zones, you will no longer, you will lose your permit for the starting zones. So if you want to stay away from some of the uh, griefers, now there are going to probably be griefers in this way, in here too, but if you want to stay away from the majority of the griefers, just stay in here until you get a few ranks and get this really understood. Now, as you can see down here, we have a play button which plays information. Uh, it plays the, the gala net information so you can listen to this stuff and skip around I just started this one just so you had an idea of what was being played all right all right we're gonna just stop that and we're going to move on to the next name now you push up from that you get your galactic powers again we're gonna go over this another time but these are your galactic powers at this current point in time and you can pledge yourself to these. This is something we'll go over in more detail in the future. Uh, and I will go over that panel at that point in time. So let's go ahead and exit that. Nope, not, didn't want to exit, wanted to go back. All right, this is your engineers. Another thing I will go over in another time. These are the first in five engineers that you have knowledge of. Um, and you got to do basic minor things to get them unlocked. And then you got an engineer help. It gives you basically tells you the information on it and go ahead and stop and read this um, because it's very good information now once you go to any of these guys after you have them unlocked you will no longer be able to be in the starter zones all right because that is all these guys are uh, planetary landings, so you need horizons and um, once you land on their land at their star bay or their home base which is on a planet you'll no longer be able to allow it in the starting zone so that is a, a, a decent thing to know all right now we go back of course it closes me out um, from there we have our galaxy news and this is what you heard being played earlier this is your galnet and all the information news it's gonna um, go ahead and play it's your power play up door your thargoid report um, if you're in, when you get into that point, uh, once you get to this point, you're going to be outside of the starter zones. You're not going to have to worry about there's the Zendi information, the week in review, the president go, doc shift theft. It's basically your information net. All right. Um, also under this is your codex. The codex is your information, a big information panel. This is your uh, information about your system. This gives you a session log of what you have done. This is your basic stats tells you all the things the, um, your stats in the in the game uh, and this keeps growing as you grow and this is your archives for um, different information uh, stuff that you've actually gone to and seen all right and this is your hollow me which you can change at any point in time by going in here and then you can change the way you look uh, we're not going to change anyone. Oh, good God. He's old. We're going to exit. And we're going to exit without saving. He's old. <laughs> old and beat. You can change your look however you want. All right. There's your hollow me, which is another way to get the quicker way to it. Your training sessions, which are here. All right. You can go through these. Watch videos. Do challenging scenarios. These are harder than the training simulations. So if you don't beat these, don't worry about it. All right. And then your squadron information, which we don't have a squadron. So um, we're and you can create one if you have 10 million credits. Uh, but, you know, it's right now uh, we don't have one and we don't need one. So. All right. That is the home panel under the module panel that has all your modules. Um, it shows your power usage, your power output on everything we have here. All right. This is everything that's um, already set up on your ship. These are your fire groups. 
Now, when you come into your fire groups, you're going to, when you jump from system to system, I'm going to tell you this. Before you even jump out, you want to do some stuff like this. We're going to put the discovery scanner on one. And that's all we really need right now because I'm going to teach you a little trick when we jump from this system to the next, which might be episode four. This episode's running on a little longer than I expected. All right. And uh, we're going to, this is your ship information, different infor ship information like your external lights you can turn on, your night vision you can turn on and off. These tells you whether your cargo stoop is deployed and loaded. Uh, you can reboot. It tells you how turreted weapons, how they're going to fire. You can change this to forward fire. Um, if you have, you can only do this if you have turreted weapons. Silent running um, basically shuts off your cooling system and you just start to slowly overheat. And this is your wing beacon, and you can turn it on and turn it off. Uh, that's if you're in a wing. Um, also, down there at the bottom, you see self-destruct. Uh, you can't do it while you're in a space station. So, not, you don't really need to ever really... You might need to do it at some point. Here's your flight assist. Um, you can turn the, hy the hyperspace dethrottle. is basically when you jump into a system, it will bring you to a full stop. You can turn that on and off. Your auto dock's on. Your auto dock auto launch is on if you have an auto deck um, your flight assist and then your rotational correction is on also I don't use that I don't even I think there's a key button for that somewhere all right your interface brightness you can change that you, you can display the clock orbital lines you do want to be have displayed on a I'm not sure the difference for the sensor scale there I'm not really look too much into it um, and you can see here you can uh, Gun sight is leading. Pre-flight checks. There's a lot of pre-flight checks you can go through if you really want. Um, we'll go through them uh, in the beginning of episode 4 just to show you a little bit about flying. Um, it's it's going to be all auto, so I don't really need to. But And port crimes against me. That's if someone attacks you, you're automatically reported to the authorities in the system. All right. And last is your statistics. This is your jump range, uh, ship health, and all the information about your ship. Next, we have your inventory, which we have nothing for inventory, so we don't need to worry about that right this second. And this is your status panel. Um, the only thing we know about is Pilots Federation as you go. Uh, this is your superpowers, your Fed, Emperor, and Alliance. Now, if you're Fed and Empire, you can go up through the ranks and earn bigger ships that you can get, but that's a future episode. This is your session log, which we saw in, basically, the Codex. And... Here is your finances, your current finance. Um, your ship insurance is 99%. But it's actually 100% because this is a free loan ship. And this is your, your permit. You, you have the Pilots Federation District permit, and it's the only thing. And this is another Galnet um, information. This is all the things, as you've seen, on the home. This is the order. It will play them, and you can go through and uh, look at these each. And boom. Now, this week in review is this week. This was last week's. This is the week prior. All right. You can listen to all these, and there's quite a few of them. Uh, 20, it looks like. Um, and you, you can listen to them if you wish. Uh, you don't have to. This is your play. This is your clear. Um, and you can auto-remove. So it's all up to you. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is your panels. That's your nav panel. That is your communication panel that is your si uh, ship panel and your status panel over here ladies and gentlemen uh, um, for that I am going to end this episode because I guess like I said it was getting a little long-winded um, and I don't want to have you sitting here for halfs and hours and all this stuff just looking at me read stuff. Um, I understand this was probably a boring episode, but if you're a new player, this is, I believe, a really good um, information um, to learn. Um, I didn't know half of this stuff, even a quarter of this stuff, when I started my first account. And uh, I really kind of wish that there was more stuff out there. And I did find a lot of stuff out there from many other commanders that have been doing this a lot longer. And uh, I'll put some links in the description to some of those as you can go over and check those out too. Um, with that all being said, I'm going to make my getaway and get out of here. And uh, we will be back soon with a, episode 4 where we're going to go over the Starport Services um, 
and then we're going to try to get on with our mission. Hopefully we can get that all done within one uh, 20 minute episode. Um, this one was a little bit longer. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you did not like this video and feel it deserves it, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want instant notifications, click that bell and then click the uh, go from occasional to always. And with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to jump on out of here. This is Great Taz signing off. Stay and see you soon.